This is for my homie. This is for my homie. Well, well, you and mm, mm, mm. I get gangster lean in that gangster lean. This is for my auntie. I see <laughs> Ray. Come on, Big Ray. Auntie Ray Neef, we miss you, girl. Gangster lean in that dragon seat. <laughs> <laughs> my God, my God. Not the seven. Mm. Come on. Not the seven. Not the new or the old. The, the one. Not the new or the old. Well, the one, the one, the one, the one, the one, good morrow, my people. It is your girl, right near the cruel, clearly in mourning, joined by my amazing, amazing, amazing co host, co conspirator. My good Lord hand, K Rich, aka Kyron the Cool. What's going on, my brother? You're great. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I know sadness is over the realm. Mm, um, mm, over Dragonstone. Mm, if you're watching sure. on YouTube, you know, we've always kept the theme of black since we ride with Team Black. But if you're watching, for got sure. the shades on. You know what I mean? You're probably looking like, damn, why this nigga got a scully on? And I got a scully on because <laughs> we ride. We ride at dawn. We riding. I'm probably muffled, but we riding. It's flat we out. Riding. Like, it, it, <laughs> shit ain't sweet out here. At all. In the words of uh, in the words of Famous on uh, Raising the Canaan, streets need a mm -hmm. body. The streets need a body. Streets need the body up this last episode. Yeah, Streets need the body up this last episode. Amen. Amen got to go. He's got to go. He's got to go. Not Amen. now, but right now. Y'all, before we get into it, welcome back to another episode of the We Got Y'all podcast. Y'all already know who we are. We already did it. We are covering season two, episode four of House of the Dragon, the Red Dragon, and the Gold. Y'all. Before we even get into it, I'm calling this best episode, definitely of season two, top three of Between Both Seasons. So, want to hear something funny? Yes. Season two, episode four. As mm -hmm. you mentioned, the Red Dragon and the Gold, highest rated episode of House of the Dragon. Mm. I can see between that. Between all 14 episodes, we got 14 at this point. So between all 14 episodes, this is the highest. The next close, oh, let me say it's ranking. Um, if you listen to Culture Guard, you know we do the ratings. 9.7 mm -hmm. out of 10 for the episode, Rachel. Okay. 9.7 out of 10. The next closest were in season one. It was a tie at 9.3 out of 10 between um, episode eight and the finale, episode 10. The Lord mm. of the Tides and the Black Queen. Those came in at 9.3. But there is a big gap, even though it doesn't sound like it, between 9.3 and 9.7. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, far and above the best episode, in my opinion. And it sounds like the yeah. general, uh, the public consumption, or excuse me, the general public's opinion as well. Incredible episode, Rachel. Sad, yeah. but incredible. So sad but also beautiful, yeah. um, gut-wrenching, amazing. I held my breath probably until after the credits in the trailer for next week's episode. I literally could not breathe. I was stunned. Jaw yeah. on the floor, mouth agape. Do you hear me? I was blown no, away. I what an episode. What an episode. Before we move into the actual episode, I guess now would be a good time to let you know there will be spoilers yes, and explicit content. So, yes, please watch the episode first because especially this week, you want to watch it before you hear about what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, we're recording this on Tuesday, releases on Wednesday, so there's a good chance you probably have heard. If you have not watched, 
Uh, but please make sure you do it. It still is worth. I don't care if you heard the episode word by word. It still doesn't know justice than to sit there and watch uh, the Dance of the Dragons and everything That's that true. took place this episode. Um, yeah, Rachel, I, I don't. This is something I'm trying. I'm really in real time trying to think because I remember watching Game of Thrones originally. And since then, I don't know if there's another show that makes me, as you said, hold my breath the same mm -hmm. way. Like you feel the anxiety, you feel it. And there's a lot of great TV out that have a lot of suspense and things that are going on. And you kind of on the on the edge of it. And, but mm -hmm. there was nothing like this. Like you just felt yeah. like you were in the battle. And literally, I felt I feel like I need to go, you know, to a to Red Rook or Rook's yeah. Keep or whatever it was. Um, yeah, Rook's Rest, excuse me. I feel like I need to go to Rook's Rest to um, serve my queen because what the fuck? What the fuck is going on, man? My bitch been taking L after L after L. Even though I know the ending, you know, even though we know whose bloodline does what, I am just taken aback. I I don't know how my girl recovers. Not just, we started off, obviously, um, major, major, major spoiler. I don't even really want to start with it. No, nah, no, nah, hell no. Nah. We, we're not going to start with it. We're going to do just like the episode. We're going to end with it. Okay. Um, because it's, it's it, it deserves the portion of our time, and we need to talk about the buildup on how we even got there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's... it's uh, like did you hear if you hear us right now, like we we this is real time reaction. Rachel, Rachel and myself do not discuss these episodes before we record. No. So we haven't had any no. kind of conversation about it. So everything we're gonna discuss is in real time. And um I've watched it three times now, and mm -hmm. it's still each time just each I time. can't believe it. I can't believe each it. I can't believe it. Upon every rewatch, my heart started palpitating, just beating hard. Like, oh my gosh, it's coming. It's coming. As soon as we see Aegon in some fire, I just lose it, you know? But anyways, guys, let's mm -hmm. get into the episode. Clearly, we lost a giant. We started with, this is for my homie slash that gangster lean. We know who it is. We'll get to my girl, my good TD. Um, Sitting in the ghetto thinking about all the homies lost no way. Uh, like, come on, man. What are we talking about? And RIP and Maylise. Come on, Maylise. The beautiful R. red. RIP and Maylise. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's a rough time. Before get we get started, Rachel, real quick, let yeah. me give some credit where it's due. This episode was directed by Alan Taylor, written by Ryan Condal. Episodes streaming on Max. And as you probably know, this series is based off uh, the book Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. Also, a little bit of insight. So you have been asking, Rachel, hey, if anybody knows anything about the books, mm -hmm. hit us up. Let us know what you got going on. Uh, so Jordan reached out because Jordan reads the books. Shout out to oh, Jordan. Jordan. Um, so she gave some insight into everything. First and foremost, the whole the entire season one of House of the Dragon mm -hmm. is based off of one chapter. Of the book, which is incredible. Oh. Like she, she pointed out, like the fact that because we, I think we mentioned about how some people talk about the slow build when it comes to mm -hmm. season one, and she was saying the fact that you even got ten episodes out of that, like that's all one chapter of the book. Wow! Like so, that in itself was incredible to me. Wow! Um, there were a couple, couple other fun facts that she wrote in on. She mentioned that in the book, when it came to the blood and cheese scene. Um, mm -hmm. Allison was supposed to be in the room with Hel Helena and the kids. Like, oh. In the book, she was in the room. I would have loved to see that play out. Um, yeah. I would have loved to see that. Um, and she also mentioned that, I told you that chapter, she said that was one of the shorter chapters of the book. So once again, okay. shout out to season one and everything that they had going on. Um, there's also some more context that she put in. She mentioned how Gwaine was actually a member of the King's Guard. And that's how him mm -hmm. and Kristen Cole know each other. So they knew each other in the books versus the okay. introduction that we get last week in the show. Um, also, 
in regard to Amon or Damon possibly being the Night King. There is a theory. She, she said, I've seen the theory Rachel was talking about on Twitter. It was my mm -hmm. understanding from the books and Game of Thrones show that the White Walkers are actually thousands of years old, likely being one of the first men. Also, pretty sure Game of Thrones did an episode about the Night King's origin, question mark. Not sure, can't remember, uh, but I don't remember exactly. However, if we are to buy that the White Walkers are actually much younger, no spoilers, but should wait for more of the war to play out before deciding who could the Night King be if this theory is any kind of legit. So in other words, it sounds like um, keep on watching and maybe we can start connecting some dots ourselves depending on what we want to believe. So thank you, Jordan, for reaching out and sending that information. As someone who is currently reading the book or one of the books, um, definitely appreciate that. Because as you know, we don't, we, we're strictly using the television show and what we get along with some side knowledge that we might read up on either way. But back to you, Rachel, what's, what's going on? I just, before you even dive into it, what were you, I guess you already talked, we talked about our opening thoughts of the episode. Yep, I was just gonna say, so let's get into the synopsis. Yeah. Uh, synopsis of the episode. In Rhaenyra's absence and with no word from Damon and Harrenhal, Rhaenys tries to keep the peace on the Black Council as Cole mounts a campaign into the Crownlands. In King's Landing, Aemon continues to undermine Aegon's fragile hold on authority. Rachel? Yeah. I guess we might as well start with the opening of the episode. Of course. We're back in uh, haunted we ass. Rachel, literally, my notes. <laughs> Damon, my notes literally say this. Damon is still at haunted ass Heron Hall. So we are <laughs> on the same page. We are thinking the exact same thing. I had, I had that written down verbatim. He's having his nightmares. Um, mm -hmm. We see him looking at the Iron Throne, which we know is a dream because he's not at King's Landing. Right. Um, he's not in the Red Keep, Red Keep. So he's looking at the Iron Throne. Not understanding the high Valerian that's being spoken to him. We see young Renera again for the second week in a row. He's asking her to speak normal. Your brother loved me more than he loved you. Obviously. Which is interesting because we know that he knows high Valerian. Which is, I think that had to do something with the dream. Okay. Or the nightmare, should I say. I'm assuming mm -hmm. because he does know it. Um, and we'll, there's, a, I, I, there's a lot to talk about this episode. We'll get yeah. to it. Um, but obviously... Mentioning how King Viserys loved Rhaenyra more than him, mm -hmm. he slices her head off. Mm. Symbolically, symbolically, excuse me, crown is at his feet. We've seen him slice someone's head off before in season one. I'll talk about that later. Um, and literally, when he wakes up from this dream, you see the blood symbolism mm -hmm. on his hands. Mm -hmm. What was your thought about his dream and that opening sequence with him at Harrenhal? I now fully believe that Damon will fight, quote unquote, for Rhaenyra, but he's also going to betray her because I think that these dreams between this last week and the vision he has later after he sees Alice indicate that he does very much still have that desire to sit on the Iron Throne himself. And Alice makes mention of it. I don't really want to get start off into that. But um, I think that Damon, it's clear because what's in you got to come out and in his subconscious, he very clearly still wants to be king. He very clearly still resents Rhaenyra as much as he loves her. The Rhaenyra that he cared about. Y'all heard last week. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the news or the post show. The Rhaenyra that he loved. You still feel some kind of way about this bitch. And maybe you love her, but you don't like grown Rhaenyra, who is the reality of Viserys' love for her. You know what I'm saying? She, mm -hmm. childhood rep Rhaenyra, again, we talked about it. Even though we know that she's the heir, this is the Rhaenyra that he lost his title to, um, essentially as the potential heir him slicing her head open to your point we saw that last season we know he likes to slice and dice i think that's a foreshadowing because uh the serpent king's brother vayman vayman Vay vayman yeah <laughs> yeah he challenged the succession in in his 
essential role. And now here is Rhaenyra essentially challenging his role. Hey, Rachel, that nigga Vayman was wild in last season. That nigga was wild. <laughs> Says your kids are bastards and you a whore. That nigga Jamin sliced his shit off so clean. Listen. That nigga was bugging. My good sis and my namesake is not going to be too many whores. Okay? There ain't going to be too many. In front of everybody, she, too. For everybody. And definitely not Sir Bitch Ass Kristen Cole. Yeah. Like, not too much on my girl because she ain't the one who needs the tea. <laughs> the plan T nice. this season. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Plan T is crazy. Hey, yo, you wild. I love it though. The plan T. So oh, I love it. I love anyway. it. I love it. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about Damon, especially this mm -hmm. episode. And he's just his past is catching up with him. Mm -hmm. Did you take do you take these nightmares as guilt? Is he guilty for the things that he's done or the things that he's thinking, or is this just a foreshadowing of his inner subconscious i think it's both okay i think he may okay. feel guilty because maybe in his four mind he wants to truly truly support rhaenyra we saw him haven't wasn't i the one who placed the conqueror's crown on your head wasn't that me so on the surface i think he genuinely believes that he wants to support her but deep down in his innermost hey. being, he has not been able to tame that dragon within him that wants to be on the throne. Again, he went his whole life pretty much anticipating seceding Viserys. Yeah. He was, I don't want to say he was glad. I haven't read the books, but something about him, he was glad that Rhaenyra's mother, uh, Emma, I think that's her name, um, lost all those children all those boys never had them this is my chance i already married my niece so that i could be your grace versus my prince mm -hmm. it's something about it so maybe he feels a little guilty but the reality is is that the feeling still exists within him and that's what he has to come to terms with uh, i think the blood on his hands could be anybody's i know what it showed you know him slicing dice right, right right yeah but he's clearly gonna have some blood on his hands yeah that's a fact and i think that guilt the guilt in no way is it like i'm guilty about being king mm -hmm. the guilt is all about because he, because he, he feel he honestly believes that he's the king, the right choice for king. He earned that. He deserves that. The guilt is about the way he's gonna have to go about doing. It. Exactly. If he decides to do so, we see Alice Rivers. We mentioned her last week. We finally actually mm -hmm. get her to reveal her name, um, but she puts the battery in his back too, and she starts yeah. questioning some of the things, same things we're talking about right now. It's, we'll talk about it as the episode goes along, but it is extremely hard not to discuss Damon and Eamon in the mm -hmm. same breath. There's a lot of similarities. Oh, um, even sure. as you're talking, Rachel, about wanting to be king, um, mm -hmm. Eamon, we know, was ready last season. Yeah. Before well, we he might wanted well start <laughs> um, All right. Well, let's, let's let me finish up with what's going on here at Heron Hall because um, mm -hmm. I think it's important was setting the plot. He, Obviously, there's a raven that's been sent. Aegon's army's on the move. They've tripled the Greens have tripled their strength when it comes to their mm -hmm. army, um, which makes me wonder what Damon is thinking during this time. Like, is he? He, I know he's meeting with people. Like, he met with Oscar Tully, the grandson of Grover Tully. Yes, mm -hmm. Oscar Grover in the books. There was a Kermit in the Elmo, the yep. Sesame Streets, as they as they like to say. Um, and he's trying to gather an army, but he doesn't seem too steadfast about it. Like he's just kind of taking his time. And I wonder at what point is he going to go back to Dragonstone? Here's Probably after this battle to, to this episode, I'm assuming. Probably, but Damon should have took his own his ass home last week. Yeah. Not just because of everything that's happened aside from him, 
But because once he had that first nightmare and all that hallucinating, he should have got the hell on up out of there. Because clearly you cannot be at your best in here in Hall. You've claimed it. Yeah. You ain't got to be there. That part. That part. So I don't know if somehow you protected and not be there. Shit. Send C Smoke over there to protect them. Like, even though Lord Tully can't uh, drive or no, ride. Yeah, he, yeah, he came but, out uh, the dragon. Tell that nigga in High Valerian, these are our people. Attack whoever comes nigh that ain't one of us. I'm sure he can follow the directions. Nah, that's Jay, real. He and... can't do anything at Heron Hall, I don't think. Because he's incapacitated. You said he met with um Alice. Nope. Uh oh, it's coming on uh Oscar. Oscar Tully. Tully. He just met with him. I mean Lord Strong earlier. He just met with uh young Tully. We know that he meets with young Blackwood later. He's not with it in either meeting. The daemon that is presented, and I don't, and they've clearly not met him before. The daemon that they see before them with Lord Strong, ah, is not a daemon that I would put my trust in. This is not somebody I want to follow and go into war behind. Yes, all hail the Queen Rhaenyra. However, this nigga's leading us. Is he drunk? Is he high? Is he okay? Has he had some of the milk of the poppy? We don't know what's going on with this nigga. He's incoherent. That nigga was looking like Craig on Friday. <laughs> when, when, when Smokey was trying to get his attention. Nigga, yes. Very like, much so. Very that nigga much was so. out of it. He was out of it. And even before he was out of it, at the beginning of the episode, talking to Oscar Tully, just on some like, my nigga, why don't you put a why don't you put a pillow over your granddad's head and, and speed up your inheritance, my nigga? It's time to ride. Like if, if you ain't riding what you here for. Uh sir, I love my grandsire. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like a father. Are you what are you talking about? <laughs> like not everybody has daddy issues or, or family issues, all type of shit. Like, actually, mm -hmm. me and my me and that nigga like we we tight. I'm not about to put pillow over his head. That part, yes. as David, you know, he was ready to raise an army against his brother. He don't give a fuck about nobody. So yeah, killed your yeah. first wife. You knew your second yeah. wife was gonna kill herself. He don't give a fuck. So no, nah, you're mm. absolutely right. And you mentioned you said we might as well go ahead and talk about Damon and Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, another nightmare, yes, slash hallucination sequence in this episode mm -hmm. uh, where Damon's in his chambers. He hears a sword drawn, so he grabs his. He goes follow this figure who ends up being him. However, he turns around at one point and is Damon with the eye patch over the left eye, similar mm -hmm. to Amen. We talked earlier in the episode when I talked about Damon cutting young Rhaenyra's head off mm -hmm. and how it reminded me of him cutting Damon's head off. If you remember that scene, Rachel, I don't know the last time you watched it or pulled it up on YouTube. The one telling part about that scene is, is when they flash, when they pan to the crowd, Amon's mm -hmm. face, the, the sick admiration. And I say mm -hmm. sick because it was a moment. I say sick because it stands out from everybody else. There, there are gas. There is terror. Uh, Renera is covering her kid's eyes. And mm -hmm. then you just get this pan of Amen. And he has this grin on his face. And it's, it's admiration. Mm -hmm. He loves it. Like, I want to do that one day. Like, I, yes. I want to be Damon. We mm -hmm. talked about this every two week. Weeks ago. <laughs> Pretty much every week. Yeah. Like, he, he, he fears me or he thinks, you know, he respects me enough to want to kill me in the night. The idea of both of them wanting to be on the throne, mm -hmm. and being those second sons. Remember when Vayman got his head chopped off? Remember King Viserys told him, "You are nothing more, pretty much, than the second, the second son." Yeah, because that's what he is. We talk about Damon, the second son. We talk about Aemon, the second son. Uh huh. Them ain't no just have, second son. Ain't no glory. And all right, not to jump ahead too far, but we see the scene at Council of the Greens. When mm -hmm. I'm not gonna commit treason and embarrass you in front of the whole council, but I'm gonna speak high Valeria and tell me you know what I'm talking about. And I'm about to mm -hmm. dog your shit. Yeah. It reminded me once again of season one when mm -hmm. Amon and Sir Kristen Cole are looking for Aegon to mm -hmm. claim his to claim his throne, to claim your yeah. uh, 
yeah, to claim your throne. And Amen pretty much was telling Sir Chris Cole, I'm the one that -hmm. practiced on the sword. I'm the one that studied the High Valerian. I was in the books. I did all this shit. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he said that I can't remember the exact quote. He said, should they come looking for me, I intend to be found. Yeah. Like straight up, that was a bar. That was one of my favorite Mm -hmm. Amy quotes. Mm Because remember, they couldn't find Aegon looking all over for him. Like, nigga, you were supposed to be king. Where the fuck are you? And yeah, Amen. That's when you knew he was business. Like, if should they mm-hmm. come looking for me, I intend to be found. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Do not mourn me, mother. It was a fair exchange. I lost an eye, but I gained a dragon. Like, Amen is about this life. Like, if there is nothing more than he was put on this earth for, then it was to rule, and uh, and and, and be that wartime consigliere, be the yeah. wartime general. It, it's just it's stunning the similarities between him and Damon and what you see throughout the episode. And both their eternal thoughts, like, yo, both of them, because here's the thing, Rachel, they both could be great leaders. I can see both of them being good leaders. For sure. If they want to, but they would get in their own way. They would get in their own way. Brilliant leaders of men. Um, I want to say, for me, with Damon's vision and seeing Eamon, it felt like, to me, there were, it's two part. It was... One, do I really remember what this nigga looked like? <laughs> All yeah. I know is that he wants to be me. And then two, yeah. or two or one A, he wants to be me. So killing him and following him is like me retracing my steps or doing the things that I know I would do. Absolutely. They're one in the same, you know? Only Absolutely. And since, and since we're there, mm-hmm. Since we're talking about that and him following that figure, who turns out to be himself, Alice Rivers, Bastard of the Riverlands, Wood Witch, talked about her last week. Mm-hmm. Wood Witch has some abilities to make some simple potions. They could be midwives. Uh, but as we know, she can see visions depending on um, the elements and things of that nature. She confirms Heron Hall was cursed. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, She's just seeing things and picking up on things, whether it's sorcery, whether it's just her intuition or her observation. You got it to it with your wife. It's probably both. Mm-hmm. Oh, like how do you figure that out? Oh, well, I mean, you came here alone to claim this castle. Mm-hmm. You haven't sent a raven yet to update anybody. That means something's going on. And I you ain't responded to the ravens that have been sent here. Exactly, exactly. Are you making your claim for the throne since you were replaced by a girl child. The mm. same child that you bounced on your knee. Mm. Putting that battery in his back. I mentioned last week, we know, you know, whether it's spoiler or not, we mentioned who Alice Rivers' association is with. She is Team Green. Mm. Maybe not right now at this very moment, but that's who she's going to end up riding with. I don't know the ins and the outs of it. But she is helping Damon, like, hey, maybe she ain't the one. Like, don't, hey. don't lie. Maybe some of you is a little bit happy that they are questioning her uh, validity to the throne. Mm-hmm. Her legitimacy, excuse me. Um, gives him that drink, like I said, started tripping, and then he they was see damn cool for drinking that shit. I don't know what he was thinking. There is nothing, and this is what I'm talking about. I said mm-hmm. last he should have got the hell up out of there. There is nothing that would make me drink anything, especially after this bitch just confirmed she's a witch. I'm not drinking nothing. You make these pomegranate seed punch, whatever this is. I'm not touching it. And again, we saw immediately after that, he's disoriented. Sees his wife. What are you doing? The deceased wife. Lena, who because of your own, and here, listen, because of his own selfish ambitions, because he didn't want to leave they weren't at Heron Hall. I forget where they were. Because you did not want to leave there because you were essentially trying to claim it. Lena said, okay, you don't want to leave. My baby done died. Or delivered a stillborn. Motherfucker, Vagar, Dracaris. And my bitch did not want to so bad, but she mm-hmm. had to. Because this is not the life that she wants. Again, Lena's death is another casualty of Damon's ambition. Yeah, well said. Well said. You're absolutely right. And shout out to Sir Willem Blackwood. 
-hmm. we met him in the scene. That is who will actually, he was the one he told the story about seeking Renera's hand in marriage. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I knew this or if I just, if I knew it and forgot it. We talked about, I think last week we talked about how he cut dude, like killed dude mm -hmm. when he was uh, getting made fun of. That was a bracket. I didn't know that was a bracket. Yeah. I so, uh, this season kind of just puts it together even further as far as like these niggas really got beef. And Damien even mentions like, are y'all riding with us because you want to ride for your queen or are you ride because you got thousands year old beef with them? And then doesn't he reminded, matter. you know, my, it doesn't <laughs> matter for one. And he reminded like my dad 20 years ago, bent the knee and, uh, you know, pretty much said we ride for Renier. Like, yeah. so, like you said, Rachel, it doesn't matter either way. And that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. I got to ask you. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, let's go. So whatever you're going to ask me. Let's go to Team Green. Okay. Your girl. Your girl. <sighs> Who girl? My only green she, girl is Helena. She get that plan T. She's getting that plan T. So we are back in King's Landing, back in the Red Keep. And somebody is not well before we get to the council. Uh, the Grand Maester enters Allison's quarters with that mm -hmm. handy dandy black kettle. Yep, the moon, moon tea is what they call it on the show. We'll call it plan tea. Thanks to Rachel <laughs> here on We Got Y'all. She says she tried to play it like it was for somebody else, like Eamon or. Uh, Damon or Aegon or Aemon have raped and pillaged another servant. Not mm -hmm. this time, girl. And I think the Grand Maester knows because Allison is, she's holding her stomach prior to this. She's a little fuller. So I am of the belief that she is already great with child. Now, the T going to do what it's going to do regardless, but I thought it was more of a preventative measure to kill everything in sight, but it may be uh, <laughs> kill everything in sight, period. Like, <laughs> yeah, it could already be there. It ain't stopping the, the sperm and the egg from tapping into each other. Like, no, it doesn't matter what's here. This is going to get rid of everything. And so she asked him, you know, we see that she is in... I'm her quarters, like I said, and she's looking at books and whatnot. And she asked the Grand Maester, do you think Viserys ever wanted um, Aegon to be king? And <laughs> Grand Maester said, my name is Paul, and that's between y'all. Howsoever, I fully believed, even if Viserys didn't say it to him, the job of those maesters is to see everything, be everything, know everything. I know for a fact he knows good and damn well that Viserys didn't want Aegon II to be his damn successor. Yep. But he can't say that because he's the help. Nigga, I am a grand maester. You think I got it this far in life by being dumb? <laughs> That's a lose-lose question. Like, well, There's nothing to gain from this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If I tell you the truth and tell you no, Aegon's a fucking idiot, then I'm committing treason. And all it's going to take is for you to get upset at me one time for you to admit that treason. And who's going to believe me over you? Nobody. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like it's it's just he he gave her that look. Like get the fuck out of here. Like you like you really expect me to answer that? Like stop. I'm and she knew better. But I there's nothing about it. She needs to, especially after the admission of find of learning that this is Aegon the Conqueror, not her ridiculous ass son. She needs to know that that's true. She is so confounded with guilt. You, this is the second or third time we hear talk about the sacrifices made for Aegon to be on the throne, and all of the, all of this is her fault. I went on the whole diatribe about even though she went to auto and the council, they were already planning to usurp this shit. But the reality is for her, she played a hand. So it's her fault that all of this has mm -hmm. happened. You know, the death of Luke, the death of um, Prince Jaehaerys, 
all of these deaths that are sure to come. All, and now the blood is now on Allison's hands as well. All for the glory of your ridiculous ass son. That's the crazy part to me. The patriarchy. You know yeah. But your son is ridiculous. You yes, really want is. this nigga to be? Well, we, we're going to talk about the scene between yeah. Allison and uh, Aegon. Yeah. You know, it's wild. We're 14. I mentioned earlier, we're 14 episodes into House of the Dragon, and I'm already mm -hmm. ready for Allison's death. Like, I can't wait sure. to see it. Um, sure. And I've never felt that way. I, I never wanted to expedite Cersei's death. Like, even um, Cersei was like, uh, do I want to say that Cersei was a. Yeah, Cersei was probably a worse human being than Allison. She blew up the set. Like, she blew up the set. Like, come on. Like, you can't. It, gets, it doesn't get too much worse than that. However, I, just on a human level, there was something. There's something about Allison where I just don't like. I don't like the way she moves. I don't like the way she like plays innocent. None of that. Like, she has she's no go. qualities. I can't wait till she goes. Uh, but speaking of going, Rainis pulls up and she goes to the ships. Yeah. And she sees Alan of old Rachel. Mm. And you and I had a conversation, and I'm pretty, I'm 90% sure the conversation we had was off mic. Mm -hmm. And you told me, I think Alan and Adam are the bastard children of Lord Corliss. Who be knowing? Rachel be knowing. <laughs> Rachel be knowing. Be knowing. That's 100% okay. right. That's 100% right. Um, there is nothing Let's talk, like talk about that scene, Rachel. Talk about that scene. Yeah, uh, there's nothing like coming face to face with your nigga side babies. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like it. <laughs> It'll humble the hell out of you, I tell you. <laughs> uh, your mother must have been beautiful. Ray, the Rays did that, so hopefully you don't have to go through that, okay? Uh. Rene said, your mother must have been beautiful. I, I want to talk about the casting. Alan looks like Corliss, like a young yeah. Corliss. Yeah. That is amazing casting. And I don't even want to say a young Corliss. I, saw, I literally just saw a clip. I wish I uh, would have bookmarked it. There's a clip of the of Corliss and Rainis, the actual people, and he doesn't have the wig on. He has a bald yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. I was I've like, seen that. Oh, oh, are they kid for real? Like, very, very, very amazing, great casting. Shout out to that. So Rainis pops by the ships to say to try to get Corliss to come back again because uh she's been summoned by Bela. And then she's met with Alan, Corliss's oldest bastard, who saved him, who she's learned because the people know who she is. She's the fucking princess. They're going to tell her who saved Corliss. Now I got to see. And now this face that I stare at, this face that I know just like my own, oh, it's staring back at me. And it's not my husband. Corliss I'm starting not to like Corliss. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. Because it's just like a nigga to try to gaslight you. I can say something about your little side baby here who saved your life. Because aside from me being the princess, I am a woman of honor. If he was anybody else, he wouldn't still be in the, in the belly of the ships. He will be lorded and honored, but because he's your side, baby, you're keeping him down here and you won't let him have his glory. Is that for me or is that for you? I don't know. Tricky. But Corliss, he feels some kind of way. Like, did you come here for what? To scold me? You came here for a lesson? What do you want? You know, niggas ain't trying to be guilt. We ain't trying to feel no guilt for our sins. What you can? The niggas grown. Don't care. Don't matter. Don't, don't want to own up. Don't don't matter. You don't want to own up to that. Already knowing. I already know who it is. We'll keep we'll, we'll keep knowing and don't have the conversation with me. You know how niggas are. You know how niggas are, are man. <laughs> All too we, well. All too well. We're gonna flip it on you like it's your fault. Like, how dare you bring this up? 
yeah, dumped y'all crazy. Um, it it was, I just the acting, yeah, incredible. Just that look, as you mentioned, Rachel, in the hand to the mm-hmm. face, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I, I looked that Rainice was pretty much, yo, I, I look at this face every night. Yep, every I know. Night, what I look you- at the same face. I know exactly who you are. Like you're the one, that, and like you said, as far as. Like, is this for you? Or is this for him? Like, why mm-hmm. is he under? He saved your life. Like, yep. saved the Lord's life. What are you talking about? Why? Like, give this man some praise. Like, give this man, like, let him come out in the light. Don't he be ashamed because you, exactly. Because what he, he, the way he, the way he has to live his life is not his fault. Exactly. He was the one fucking around having bastard children. Exactly. Like, oh, you are, oh, you are hiding. The, what push your teeth say to Drake? You are hiding the child. Let that boy yeah. come home. <laughs> What's up? You might have said it last week. I don't I don't know if you did, but now I am of the ilk. This is why Corliss is not geeked about giving uh Dragonstone or, or Driftmark to Raina or Joffrey. He's gonna give it to Alan. I'm not faced about oh. these. Here go my son, who stomps like a big dog, who knows the seas, knows the water, saved my life. I can't talk to you about that shit right now, Renice. I'm trying to finagle how I'm going to get my son in here. My living son, my straight son. Who can for real? I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna make him Valerian soon, but I got to. I got to finagle all of this shit first. Mm, so he was gonna get over the whole bastard thing and try to legitimize him, mm-hmm. so he could be heir. Mm-hmm. That is. Oh, I see it. I see it. Oh, because as you mentioned, we don't meet these characters. We met these characters in episode one. We don't meet them for no yeah. reason. So right. we know they play some kind of purpose. This week, we find out exactly who they are. Mm-hmm. And we, we, I mentioned last week when we met off, yeah, who was who said he's the bastard brother of Damon and King Viserys, mm-hmm. Dragon Sea. And I mentioned Dragon Sea and what mm-hmm. that means and what area from. So we've got two thirds of the puzzle figured out. Mm-hmm. We know Off is Dragon Sea. Now we know Alan and Adam are Dragon Sea as well. Yep. Oh. Mm. But damn, Rachel, I never thought about that, but you were honest. It literally just came to me. It literally just came to me. And it makes sense as to why he was so standoffish about Joffrey and Raina. He loves the sea. He loves these ships. You telling me two people who don't know shit about this that has made me the richest man in Westeros and the greatest captain? I'm going to give it to these fools. And not this man with my blood, like Raina, but it's pure and knows all of this shit that I know and saved my life. Yeah. I'm beholden to you. And like Adam said, he owes us or you specifically. And he was really fucking with their mama. You got two kids. They ain't twins. Right. Now nah, you got two kids. And in the book, I forget her name. My, my apologies to the avid book readers and deep fans, but I did read a little bit about the mother. Mm-hmm. She she was good on the sea as well. She had a ship like that. The, the sons helped her with a ship. And I think it was a trade ship. Mm-hmm. It was a trade ship. She started with one and she ended up by the time something came around one of the wars. I can't remember what it was. She ended up having seven ships. So she was an entrepreneur. Pretty much, so yeah, she yeah. knew her way around, and like you said, Rachel, this wasn't no one and done. This is ain't no point of fucking with a nigga if you can't learn nothing from him. Hello, okay. Yeah, so she was she was a hustler. She was valid. She was mm-hmm. valid, um, and she was very beautiful. Um, yeah, of course, as we mentioned. But yeah, yeah, that's. I got to go to Dragonstone. <laughs> At the end of the day, I ain't even got time to talk to you about this shit because I see what kind of attitudes you got going on. Um, I just wanted to let you know I gotta go to Dragonstone because Rhaenyra's is still going. Baylor needs me. Rhaenyra. Who just hates Rhaenyra low key? He does. Where is she? Where the fuck is? Where the fuck is she? Like, what's going on? Like, you ain't heard nothing from her? Like, she ain't tell nobody nothing. 
Mm -hmm. Release straight up now. I'm assuming she's going to try to protect the realm and try to defend, you know, try to prevent war if possible. Yeah. Yeah, he hates, he hates. Oh, and you know it's only going to intensify next week. Mm-hmm. Because now even I Even though you him. were in the room. Even though you were in the room, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some council meetings. Yeah. You want to start let's... with black or green? You want to go black or green? Let's go black. Let's go black council. Uh... So... I was just gonna say the nigga that we told everybody to keep an eye on. The nigga that we we remember we said, uh, "Who the fuck are you?" Like I don't know who you mm-hmm. are, bro. That's be talking. Mm-hmm. We learned his name is Sir Alfred Broom. Yeah. The nigga with all these trees and his words coming out of his mouth. We got to keep an eye on him. I see. I know a traitor when I see one. We got to keep an eye on all of them. I know a traitor when I see one. He he's the he's the leader. He's the leader. He's a leader. He's the one that starts the second group text. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's the one that takes the few people out and talks the second group text, and then like, all right, man, you know what? Like, what we what are we really about to do? Because this shit is a shit show. We need to go. We need to either become the winners or we need to go to the winning side. One of the two. So you can tell he's stirring the pot. And for the lack sure. Of respect for the kids. See you got Jace. Of- Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got Jason, you got uh, Bela just sitting there chilling. Jace out there looking like Caitlin Clark. Like, I was like, damn, like, these niggas look similar. That shit was crazy. But dumb. <laughs> we did get it. <laughs> hey, I, I'm sorry. That's that's exactly what I thought. Both times. I'm, I kept seeing Jace like, damn. Um, but I love how Sir Alfred Broom was talking this cash and all of a sudden Big Dog come in the room. Because when the big money walk in, everybody got to shut up. I keep telling y'all about Big Daddy. If y'all listen to the shy, I told you when Big Daddy come in, everybody got to shut the fuck up. Corliss, even though I'm mad at you, you see I done took that Lord off. (laughs) Corliss. (laughs) Just like an angry angry woman. Just like an angry woman. Like, nigga, you fuck your titles. We scratching titles today. (laughs) Everything, Everything that's wrong with you, I'm about to make sure I mention it to you. <laughs> when Big you Daddy retw- comes, you need a re- you need a retwist, nigga. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> he comes in and shuts all the bullshit conversation down because that's what he does. I keep telling y'all that's big money and also the highest ranking person there. You know, these are just lords of houses, but motherfucker Driftmark is that shit. You know, and also we get Rhaenyra. But I'm curious on your thoughts. We kind of dusted over it, but they genuinely were not fucking with Jason Bela. I love Jason Bela as a duo. Straight up. Also, I said it last, maybe last week or the week before. As much as Bela can stand Damon, she got the, her daddy mannerisms down just like Jace. And they both have Damon's same attitude. I don't know how Rhaenyra is living with all these little Damons in the house. <laughs> that's why she gone. That's why she like, man, I need some time away. Fuck this. I'm out of here, man. Y'all niggas figure this shit out. I'm cool. My girl needs a breather. Yeah, I'm cool. Like, it's too much going on, man. I can't do all this shit. Y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. doing too much in here. Uh, but anybody that knows me knows. Like, don't, if you're going to pop your shit, you better be able to pop it when, no matter who comes in that door. Yeah, yeah. Like, so Alfred Broome, we knew he was a sucker. He, we knew he was a sucker-ass nigga, but this just solidified it, put the stamp on it. Like, your whole tone changed from Lord Corliss. Well, Corliss pretty much said, nah, keep talking that shit. Keep talking that gangster shit you was talking, Sir Alfred. And I wonder, how, now. I wonder how much he heard because they started to bark on Rhaenys, too. She didn't. They. She didn't name you her hand. Why does your voice matter more than ours? Mm-hmm. Power hungry. Power hungry. And that's still the princess Rainice. Now, let's. <laughs> what's going on? Everybody is getting beside themselves. Everybody's too restless and ready for war, and to essentially assume power and take the throne. Shout out to Corliss. That's all in that instance. Um, you want to get to. Corliss. And Ray needs for reminding them at the end of the day, we want to end this war. We don't want to keep going. So if your focus ain't on that, 
then I ain't trying to hear it. All this other little petty power struggle bullshit trying to undermine somebody's authority just because mm-hmm. they ain't y'all bullying for real. Like, even though Ray Nisa can hold her own, but you got these, these yeah. are kids, these are children. Like, Jason, right. Baylor, y'all think y'all tough because y'all like, keep that tough shit going. Like I said, Corliss came in, y'all ain't had none of that for him. So I, I don't respect it. I don't respect it. Some sucker yeah. shit. I already see that Sir Alfred is going to be uh, a bitch ass nigga. Yeah. So it is what it is. Where'd you want to go next, Rachel? Did you want to go to the Green Council? Yeah, I was going to say uh, Rhaenyra hasn't come yet. Um, well, yeah. I guess she has, but we can bounce to the Green Castle. Okay, yeah. So we can go to the Green Council and then we'll go back to when Rhaenyra comes back. She walks yeah. in during Council as well. Yeah. Uh, before we get to Green Council, Sir Cole, this pains me, Rachel, but I got to give it to that nigga. He's talented. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. He's good at what he does. Like I hate to say that, and I hate to give him props publicly, but he's good at what he does. Uh, we go to a battlefield where we're in Duskendale. Mm-hmm. We're in Duskendale. He's talking to you. See the bodies splatter all over, and you see him talking to the men. He's pretty much saying, "Listen." You want to live, bend the knee. Fly your banner for the one true king, or if you want to support the whore, um, then you can do that, but you're going to lose your head for it. Yeah. And in the words of Beans and, and, and the classic cinema of state property, nigga, you either get down or you lay down. That's pretty much yeah. what he told these niggas. Get down or lay down, and that's what it is. Um, if you want to hold your oath, then I'm going to take your head. And we see... Uh, Lord Jacqueline. Uh, uh, yes, thank Lord you. Mm-hmm. Yes, spit on his spit on his feet, like King Maker. Man, get the fuck out of here. You're not fit for like, the white cloak. No, not fit for the white cloak. Not fit for white cloak. Um, you know, this is a better death than you deserve. And one thing that I thought was telling, the show doesn't do mistakes like this. Or they don't make mistakes. Yours will come in kind. Mm-hmm. I'm telling Sir Kristen Cole. Before he chopped his head off, yours will come in kind, nigga. Your day is coming. Don't worry. Somebody gonna get your ass. Somebody and I gonna get yours. And if there's I anything, it's Rhaenyra. Somebody's gonna swing a sword on his head. I hope it's Rhaenyra. It's probably Damon or maybe Jace, but I hope it's Rhaenyra. Because Chase you call would be... my girl. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm saying, because you call my girl one too many whores. And again, y'all keep calling her a traitor. Like, y'all didn't steal her throne. You know this is my birthright. You especially know, Kristen Cole. Hello? Mm-hmm. I'm not playing with me. Okay, go ahead. What was you going to say? Nothing. I was just about to say, uh, Jace would be poetic justice. Yeah. I would love yeah. to see Jace be the one. Like, Rhaenyra, for some reason, just knowing what I know about Game of Thrones and that world, um, even though we're in House of the Dragon now, there was something about the way he looked at him and said, yours will come in kind. Mm-hmm. Which I took as, this: you're going to die the same exact way you're killing me, bro. Like, just don't mm-hmm. you wait. Don't mm-hmm. you wait. Like, trust me, it's coming. Um, I don't know if Rhaenyra's going to swing a sword, I don't know if she's a swordsman like that. Get down with the dragon shit. She'll swing that sword. Yeah, we're going to see. I can't wait. It can't come soon enough. I think to your point, Jace doing it would be poetic justice. Again, flashback to season one where he basically instructs Aemon and Aegon to attack Jason Luke basically to the death. Oh, nigga, it's payback time because you were complacent and a proponent of my uncle's abusing us. Shout out again. This is why uh, Harwin Strong got banished because he was like, no, nah, fuck, I'm going to take this nigga up top. These are my kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you teach cruelty? So your animosity towards my mother has caused you to mistreat us. And in turn, to your point, I do want it to be Rhaenyra again. But if Jace does it, Poetic justice. That's what you get. Get back. That's real. That's real. We're going to see how it plays out. I'm sure we got a ways to go before we get there. But, man, 
Uh, I hate the fact that Sir Kristen Cole is so good at his job because this nigga is collecting shit like it's Monopoly. Um, yeah. But which also, leads us to... He's collecting shit like it's Monopoly, but our, I'm of the understanding that all of these houses and stuff that he's taking, they're strained. These aren't full force houses so, just repping for Aegon. Like, I know he's in the Riverlands, but like, this shit is frazzled. Yeah, it's more so about the plan as far as cutting, mm -hmm. you know, keeping her deserted on those islands. Like, you have no yeah. way to even attack. Um, yeah. Because you can't just win with dragons, which is something they're, they're clearly notating. And I think mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's not necessarily about, hey, this is a powerful house, because Aegon is thinking the same way. Like, hey, we need Heron. Yeah. Like, that's what we need. We need that castle. And they're like, nah, bro, we got a whole plan in here. Don't worry about it. Like, we got to figure it out. Which leads us to the yeah. Green Council. A guy mentioning once again, I want to hear in Hall that ca <laughs> and, and Laris with his humor. Uh, that house, that castle is more crippled than me. It's cursed. I have all the gold. Like, trust me, your grace, that has nothing. Like, there's no value in Heron Hall right now. Um, the false oh, queen remains trapped on the islands. Go ahead. How come don't nobody know what's going on at Heron Hall? Who was who was nobody? You mean Aegon? Damon or Aegon? Alaris obviously knows that his house is haunted and decrepit. How come don't nobody else know that? That's a great question. But it goes back to what you said earlier. Why why are you still there after last week, Damon? Like, why didn't you already bounce? You might not have known before, but you got a good taste but of you it. Know so you but even in going to Heron Hall, you know, this is where Harwin and Lord Lord Strong was burnt up and died. What the hell y'all think this castle looked like? Absolutely. I don't get it. Absolutely. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, you good, because it is cursed, and it makes no sense as to why they're still around, or why he's still around, and he's dolo. You don't mm -hmm. got nobody else with you except for your dragon. Now, if your dragon starts tweaking out because that shit cursed, now you really fucked, so you better... Exactly. Exactly. Back to Driftmark. Yeah. Um, but really, this scene, you know, we have Aegon yelling out, I need to be informed of these things if I'm, if, if I'm going to make counsel. But really, this council scene is about Aegon versus Aemond. Before you go there, you we just mentioned Lyris. Shout out to Lyris weaseling his way into the council meetings. This is the first He's time we've seen him seated at the table. Okay. He wasn't there last week? Mm -mm. Okay. Not in the room. That's right, because he came and saw him afterwards. And Aegon mm -hmm. mentioned about the, you know, my father never wanted to master whispers. Yes, Aegon, yeah. we, hold on, speaking of, Larius weaseled his way all over the place this episode because he weaseled his way to see Allison after the council meeting. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And put two and two together. I don't know how people. All right, go ahead and finish the council first, and we'll I jump will. right into Larys after. Uh, okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, let me hold that. Down. I'll put a pin in it. Just because it flows into the next scene, so let's finish. No, nah, nah, you're right. You, yeah. You're right. Like I said, this scene more so more than the council meeting is really about Aegon versus Aemon, and I alluded mm -hmm. to it earlier. Mm -hmm. So Kristen's headed to Rook's Rest. Dragonstone's gonna be cut off by land. How do you notice? Sir Cole sent word to me. Oh, y'all niggas. Y'all send a secret white email? Y'all send a secret white email. Secret green emails. Y'all, 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 yeah, what the fuck is going on? How come nobody told me about this? Mm -hmm. And you apply it without my authority. And Amen looks at him. Once again, you my brother, you family. We've been together since we were kids, side by side. Mm -hmm. So I ain't gonna play you the way I should play you, but sometimes it's just about me and you. As long as you know, I don't care about nobody else at this table knowing that I'm mm -hmm. dogging you. I want you to know. So I'm about to speak high lyric. Some shit that I know you didn't pay attention to when we were kids. The same way I did. I'm gonna speak this shit fluently, and I'm gonna let you know you ain't shit. Your plans ain't shit. I'm gonna ask you some questions. What kind of answers do you have for? Me? Like we we waiting for you to guide to guide us, your king. Like, what's going on? Bruh. Amos said, you embarrassed me in front of my bitch last week. 
I'm going to embarrass you in front of the council. Let me tell you, everybody knew that he was getting embarrassed. And let me tell you who knows mm -hmm. High Valerian, Black Grand Maester. He knows Valerian. Yep. The mother people, they might not know, but all they, they can read body language and the air was thick. But Black Grand Maester, he knows High Valerian. I believe that wholeheartedly. He got to. I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Because even was, when 150 years, 200 years forward, when we get to Game of Thrones, I think a lot mm -hmm. of the Maesters know High Valerian. Mm -hmm. So it's not like something that's lost. Teachers. Yeah. And he probably knows it better than Aegon. Like straight sure. up. And he, sure. and he lists out all, let me tell you about your accomplishments. You got some idiots at your King's Guard. You know, you, mm. you're choosing your uh, uh, sobriquet. Bro, you you trash. You're terrible. Like, you awful. We all know it. I don't care if you want to admit it, but if you got a better plan, if you got a strategy to speak up, tell the table, let's go what's going on. And then Aegon speaks in some broken ass Chopped up for high Valerian can't even really uh put a sentence together. Just prove Amy's point. We can make a war. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's your mother tongue, my nigga. That's your mother. Shout out to Daenerys. That's my mother tongue. And you don't even yeah. know you had That's the wife Viserys. You is your daddy. Everybody but you with embarrassing, right? Crazy. Embarrassing. Joffrey and probably knew High Valerian better than uh Aegon. Aegon. Yeah, probably knew more. Yeah, I, I would say that. And he did it so slick. Aemon did it so slick to where he did that. I did it on the humble. Mm -hmm. I asked you, if, I told you, if you got something to share from a strategist perspective, please let us know now. He ain't say nothing. Oh, you ain't got he nothing to say? I'm going to take over. I'm going to take over. Aemon said, I'm, I'll take over the rest of this meeting. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. So exactly how we moving and what we doing. Lord, Lord, Lord. And that's all because you want to be funny, I can be hilarious. I can be hilarious. It's funny to, it. Like it's funny to come in the brothel, clown mm -hmm. me, all that shit. Okay, then bet. When it's really time, the shit that you care about, I'm going to make sure I get you. I'm going to stick you where it hurts. Stop playing. With me. Pause. Related. Call back to me saying Auto told Eamon after his conversation with Sir Christian Cole while they were in the room, maybe episode one, plans are being laid. It cuts. Christian and or Cole and Eamon, they're sending the secret green emails or secret green ravens between each other. I told you and I told y'all that they was making plans for Amen to be king. They was going to get Aegon out of here by any means necessary. The groundwork is being further laid. Air work okay. too. The air, the air work is also being laid. <laughs> uh, did you Bruh. want to just, did you want to go any further into Laris? Um, Going to see Allison, yeah. Yeah, you, you want to go into that? Okay, you, you said, all right, yeah, you said, well, that weaves right into it. Yeah, go ahead. Let's talk about yeah. it. Because he, uh, I, with the point I was going to say, and I'll let you get into it. All mm -hmm. I was going to say with is, if you know, Rachel, it's no different than that nigga that just always runs his mouth, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I know, that when that nigga comes around, there's no pertinent information that leaves my mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not, there's nothing you're going to hear me say to where you can go tell the next person, I'm just gonna keep things close to the vest. So how is it that this man comes in and you just you just he knows everything? I wouldn't say shit to him. I kick him out everywhere he goes. Like, what are we talking about? You know who uh Laris is? You remember the cartoon recess? Yeah. What was his name? Finster, the little humpback yeah. dude who used to be getting yeah, uh, that's who yeah. Laris is. But Lyris is no different than Masseria. People who are masters of deception, and I don't even really want to say disguise, but who can find out a little bit of everybody, they are invaluable because you'll be needed to know some shit. Howsoever, that knowledge always comes with the cost. They're loyal to nobody. 
You know, season one, we saw Laris beckoning at Allison. You know, she was showing in racial chat room showing feet with him. Now, <laughs> but Laris, <laughs> Laris is that. salty. <laughs> Bless that. Lyris is salty at Allison. Not only am I not getting feet pics anymore, you don't replace me. Bitch, you think I don't know you fucking Sir Kristen Cole? If don't nobody else know, I know. So I done left Allison and now I'm weaseling my way to Aegon because I thought that that's where the power was. Now I know better. Let me tap... Let me tap the king, because you ain't got shit. And you ain't sending me no feet pics no more? You ain't fucking with me? Are you fucking this nigga? Okay, got it. I told y'all either last week or the week before, it's not a secret that Allison and Kristen Cole are fucking. I alluded to, it had to be the week before um, with Arik and Eric. Like I said, yeah. I think that they know that this is it going works. on. So where were you? Ricky? So now here we are. Where's Larry in the Red Key? Yeah, Laris clearly knows that Allison was not at the council meeting as to which she's been. Before, last time he noticed she was missing in action, she was indisposed with this nigga Cole. So now I come, I'm knocking on your door. You don't feel good? What's going on? What do I notice? Playing tea on the table. Allison didn't even put the shit up. She didn't hide it. It's just still sitting on the table. Now, Black Grand Maester already told her it's going to fuck with your stomach. So ain't no telling what she's doing. And I don't know the significance of these rocks she's carrying around. I don't know if it's supposed to be a... Uh, she was in the fire heat. Uh, so maybe it's like a hot stone, hot tile situation that she got to yeah. put on her stomach because that's a pain. She going through it. Baby, leaving your body is pain, baby. <laughs> and, the, and the Grand Maester said it, 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 it tends to disagree with the stomach. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Larry said, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> he looked at that tea and said, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a rich indulgence. Clearly, he knows what the fuck is that is and what it's doing on yours. And it's nothing I can do. I have no defense. I have no defense for this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just act like I don't see it. Or pretend it's regular ass tea. Nigga, everybody knows what this is. He comes mm -hmm. upon her. She, again, is looking into the histories. I didn't know that you cared about the histories, you know? Like your like your late lower husband. Mm -hmm. If you remember in season one, Allison did like the histories. That was something that she and Rhaenyra enjoyed together. Now, was she laying the groundwork to do some plotting by way of her daddy? I don't know. But we know that she does have basic understanding of uh, Targaryen history, this, that, and the third, and then coming to rule. Laris mentions um, Laris mentions Viserys changing his mind. Mm -hmm. I think, not I think, I know he doesn't think Viserys changed his mind into making mm -hmm. Aegon the king. So now, I have multiple things to blackmail you with. I have the fact that you were showing feet last year. I know you done took this plan T and you ain't fucking me. And I know that you usurped this throne. What have you done for me lately? What did you think of the conversation uh, Laris and Allison had? If I was, if I cared about Allison, which I don't, I would have quickly told her, "Hey, shut the fuck up! Stop talking! Stop talking to this nigga! Stop yeah. saying anything!" Yeah. All it was was a masterclass of I got the drop on you, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's nothing. and I'm catching you while you already your mind is already elsewhere because you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I think what you said has some truth. When I say you, I mean Allison. I think what you're talking about mm -hmm. has some truth. Uh, you know, my husband died weeks ago, and now we're going to war. You know, mm -hmm. everything when when he was alive, there was peace. Renera even mentions later on the episode. You know, my father left me. I inherited eighty years of peace. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that might be true. I'm trying to figure out how we even got to this situation and how we're here. So a lot of it is on my mind. But at the end of the day, 
I can't hide none of the shit from Larry. She, and Allison, she attempts to be ahead of the curve with everybody else, but Larry is always ahead of the curve with, it, with her. And she yes. sees it, like you said, before you even have, because most people, when you know stuff is going on or you have, all right, let's say it is a plan B, you know, in modern times or whatever the case mm-hmm. is, you always cover up your shit. Throw yeah. the package in the way. Let me make sure this is not out in the open. Mm-hmm. You left your evidence out. Bet. And Laris is so smooth, he ain't gotta, I ain't gotta address that. I just gotta look at it and look at you. You know exactly what's going on. You know I know what time it is. Um, I got to know I, what's in that potion that you can't just put it in a regular teacup. <laughs> I got man, to know. It's, it's a, it's a, <laughs> that grand master said, I brewed it myself. <laughs> I brewed it myself. Like, so whatever you Baby, need, keep the lid on this. All right. But the part of the episode, and this is when you know that Laris is being funny. Mm-hmm. You must worry for him in regard to Sir Kristen. You must worry for him. Your sworn, your sworn sword on the march. Uh-huh. What kind of sword was Come he talking? Hmm? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Like the, the question, the, the digging. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The digging around and mentioning things just to be funny. I just want to see what you what you say to this. Like, what, what's your response to this when I bring up Sir Chris Cole? You're gonna try to play it cool, mm-hmm. like ain't nothing there. We all have been there when we know. Shout out to Martin. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the episode of Martin when Gina saw Tommy and Pam on that couch separated, and she kind of mm-hmm. did that. Hold up, nah, like nigga. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Like she knew yeah. it was. Like, you can't hide this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I don't care what you try to play, how cool you try to be. Oh, yeah, Sir Chris Cole, you know, he's a hand. Like, nah, nigga, you fucking that nigga. And mm-hmm. like you said, Rachel, first of all, this is why I love the internet. Because if you've been around along for like the growth of Twitter, you know, and, and just what it's been through throughout the years, there's certain things, so much has happened that you forget them. And the fact that you mm-hmm. brought up that Doge cat, she's showing her, she's showing her feet in racist chat room shit. I completely forgot about that shit until you said it. I don't even know why the fuck your Brian was thinking that, but that is hilarious. Anybody who doesn't know that, look, just Google Doja Cat and feet chat room. Just do all, like that shit was serious. That was a hell of a pool, Rachel. Hell of a pool. Um, but yeah, Lord Shout Larry is his Yeah, man. Shout out to Nori. Shout out to Nori, man. Uh, <laughs> as only Nori could say it. Um, right. Showing feet. But that's pretty much it. That's that was my thought on Lord Larry's. Like I just I don't know what's going on. I just want to see if yeah. you're gonna play. Like uh uh what what did uh what did Tasha Tasha Smith's character and why did I get married at the at the infamous I dinner table scene? Or I big uh got mad. I got my see shot. How yeah, I've been new. That's what he Wait, was no, doing. He was just something. playing the game, waiting on you to say something. Crazy. Ah, you still playing dumb? Okay, cool. Cause like you said, Rachel, don't even matter. I'm I'm going to Aegon now. Cause you can't do shit for me. I'm trying to climb right. up the ranks. You know what I mean? You can't do shit for me, and you ain't doing nothing for me anyway. You can't do, can't give me information, and you're not doing anything for me personally. Yeah. So it is what it is. Let's uh let's stay in King's Landing and get back to the next Green Council, cause that's kind of the next thing that happens is Damon at Heron Hall again. But we've already talked about that. Unless there was anything yeah. you wanted to add, nah, no, okay. So we're back, <laughs> right? Uh, so we're back at the green console again, and they're talking about Cole being the king maker that's what they're calling him. And Aegon is pissed, he's listening to them talk. He said, Y'all are boring. What was more interesting to me because we know that Aegon is still seething from the previous, uh part of the council. But we learned that the crown is broke. Mm-hmm. You ain't got no these, money. <laughs> these niggas broke. These niggas broke. And it, it made me think of last week, how you buying rounds of drink on the crown and the crown ain't got no damn money. Because who's going to pay? Who's going who gonna to ask me to pay my tax? I dare you. I'll have your head tonight. Right. Right. That was very, very interesting to me. Um, that was just the biggest thing. And we now see the, the, the start or the winding of the battery that is in Aegon's back. 
we get back to he and Allison. Um, he walks in on her once he leaves the council meeting. And again, she's looking for Viserys' books. And she says, you know, where his shit at? She's like, I had him removed. And she like, no authority or no thought for your husband or your father's studies. He's like, I moved him. I didn't burn him. You said it last week. Allison hates Aegon. She hates all of her children, <laughs> except <that>. maybe Helena. <laughs> She hates him. Helena gets, I think Helena gets the two. I think she pities Helena. I don't think she hates her. She's just an awful mother. She's not a good mother, but I don't yeah, I don't think she I hates her. Like there's a there's a visible disdain for Eamon and Aegon. So, you know, she says, she basically called him a fool. She says, Have you learned nothing? You know, all the sacrifices that we did to get you up here. I wish that you would have learned, leaned and gleaned to the people who actually know what the fuck is going on. And she finally said the quiet part out loud, what I've been waiting for her to say, I ruled in your father's absence. She makes mention of Otto. We did that with him as my hand, this, that, and the third. People keep saying, or I keep saying, Allison wanted the fucking glory for her damn self too. Mm -hmm. That is what all of this is about and now again your hands like damon are bloody yep she told Aegon to sit your ass down and don't do shit shut don't your whole ass up and play some drums nigga <laughs> mo would love that uh she <laughs> <laughs> right i think we'll love that part <laughs> she said don't touch nothing don't do when we go into the store. Don't ask for nothing. Don't, <laughs> don't ask for shit. It. Don't touch it. Don't touch shit. You ain't getting shit. You've broken your damaged son's spirit. What does Aegon do? Go get fucking drunk. Yep. And we'll table it and we'll get back to the Black Council. <laughs> so, real quick, real quick, before yeah. I give a couple thoughts on that whole scene. Yeah. Every Green Council meeting, and we haven't addressed this yet, and I don't know mm -hmm. what it means. I don't know if it means anything. We see these marbles. Mm -hmm. If anybody out there is listening that knows the significance of these marbles, if they have any significance at all, we would love to know. It's just something that's very, I'm even going back to when Prince Jaehaerys was playing with the marbles and um, Tylen Lannister was trying to get him to stop, which started the mm -hmm. infamous give them a piggyback ride like these marbles have been in every single meeting and at the beginning of this session you see Aegon twirling one around the little circle before he tells them that he's bored um mm -hmm. so yeah I, I you know obviously he's steaming because he all he's hearing about is you know the whole realm is on Sir Chris Cole and Amos Dick mm -hmm. all on their dick because they out here y'all they calling him Kingmaker and blah 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 like nigga Give me an opportunity, and I promise you, I can do the same thing they're doing. Obviously, delusional when it comes to that. But the Allison is obviously still thinking about. Go ahead, go ahead. Sounds like you found something. Um, the marbles essentially are a way of visualizing the set formality for the small council. Basically, them clocking in to work. So it's basically your attendance marble. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Makes sense why it was spinning because his, his yeah. attendance is reeling. His whole his whole presence is reeling at this point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The catch. So we see Allison. She's looking for those books because she's obviously still shook from her conversation with uh, Renee. Like, yeah. I'm trying to search every single piece of document here if I can find anything about this uh, song of ice and fire because mm -hmm. I haven't heard about this and I know I fucked up and it's gonna make me feel better at least if I can read it for myself and try to. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, redefine what was actually being said. But I thought that it was the scene that was needed and the scene that Allison has been waiting her entire life, not her entire life, but Aegon's entire life to say. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned a lot of it, Rachel, but the fact that Aegon even came in and said, they don't care what I think. They haven't sought my aid or thoughts. And Allison, like, what thoughts would you have? 
<laughs> bitch. Like, what thoughts would you have? Like, what are we talking about? Do you think simply wearing the crown gives you wisdom, which is a bar? You're yeah. the only one who hasn't earned their seat on the council. I'm just hoping you be half the king your father was. Tread carefully, or what? Or you what? Hang yeah, you mm -hmm. gonna hang me like you did the rat catchers? Like, my nigga, at this point, like, you don't. Uncle Junior in The Sopranos has a quote. Mm -hmm. Some people are so. <laughs> nah, nah, not, not that Uncle Junior. <laughs> See, that's why I said Sopranos. Yeah, you funny as hell. He got a lot of Uncle Junior from Jamie Foxx got a lot of quotes too. For sure. Go Uncle, ahead. Uncle Junior in Sopranos says one of my favorite quotes of his is says, Some people are so far behind they think they're in the lead. Mm. Some yeah. people are so far behind in the race that they think they're in the lead. And that is Aegon. Mm -hmm. And she had to break it down to him. Like, my nigga, like, what are you talking about? Like, you're not even you're not even a part of this game that we really playing. Like, you are. You playing checkers while everybody else playing chess. That's why everybody knows what moves are being made except for you, even mm -hmm. though you wear the uh, the crown. You should be seeking our opinions. So what you yeah. said earlier, Rachel, I mm -hmm. rule. Mm -hmm. I know what this shit is like. I've been in your shoes. Like I literally can say I've been in your shoes, and I did it mm -hmm. a lot better than you did. Like You don't know shit. And just because yeah. you're king, that doesn't just make you wise. You should shut the fuck up at these meetings. You should ask mm -hmm. us. You should ask, hey, what should we do? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna take your mm. advice because you guys know what you're talking about. Um, Crazy. You have no idea the sacrifices that were made to put you on the throne. Do what is needed of you. Nothing. She told mm. him, do nothing. Sit back and relax. Yeah. Entourage, right? There's a there's, mm -hmm. and one of the seasons of Entourage. I remember there's a conversation with Vince and the boys about being king. Right, he was like, I don't want to be. This was like, I don't want to be king. Like, I would have to be prince. Why you want to be prince? Because the prince just gets to sit back, chill, and tell the girls that one day he's gonna be king. It's the easiest yeah. job in the world. I still mm -hmm. get the fame, I still get the love, but I ain't got none of the responsibility that comes with it. I'm mm -hmm. cool being the prince and being royalty and going from there. Yeah, a guy needs that title, he needs that power, he needs his credit. Mm -hmm. Like, I need my credit. If I don't get my credit, then it don't matter. If they ain't singing songs about me 200 years from now. Then what the fuck is the point? And that's what he's Question. Asking. Yo. When Aegon is found in the pits of the whorehouse, what do you think his plan was? Should the throne had not been usurped? We know that Otto and Allison cooked up the idea for Jace, Luke, and uh, Joffrey to be like cupbearers or some shit. But what, what would Aegon, Aemon, and uh, Darren and Helena have done? I know Otto made mention like they would pray that Rhaenyra has mercy, but like you didn't spend your time like Aemon learning High Valerian to even be someone of use. So what? What is the plan? What the fuck was you going to do with yourself and with your life had the throne not have been usurped? You just would have maybe gallivanted about the city and stayed in the house if Rhaenyra let you? That's exactly what he was going to do. Some people don't have a backup plan. Some people need plan A to work. Yeah. Because if plan A doesn't work, then I'm screwed out here. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm useless. He's an idiot. He's a bumbling idiot. Has no other skills. Like literally, yeah. Aegon doesn't have any other skills. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I don't know why I'm saying other skills. He doesn't have any skills at all. The mm -hmm. best thing that he can do is he can ride a dragon. That's it. That's his, that's his that's his biggest benefit. For leisure. But he's an idiot. For leisure. Like it, 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 you got to go. You dead weight. Like what are we keeping you around for? Had Allison not sold the cords of discord between her children and Rhaenyra, and we get the slicing of Aemon's eye. Aemon could have been so beneficial to Rhaenyra in her council. You know what I'm saying? I, Aemon is sick. He's nuts. I don't fuck with him. But I cannot, in good faith, not honor his, I don't really want to say foresight, but his, his military mind. Nobody wins. Aegon, 
Nobody <laughs> wins when the family feuds. Aegon and Amen. Matter of fact, I don't know why Aegon hasn't spent. I guess it started as kids. Even before Aegon gives him the pig mm-hmm. and says that's your, you know, the pink, I forget what it was named, the, the fucking pink something. Mm-hmm. Pink herds, pink something. Y- y'all know what I'm talking about when they were talking about how Amen doesn't have a dragon and you know they're in the uh the dragon pit and all that kind of good stuff. I say all that to say, like he's been picking on Amen for so long, and it's when all nice. actuality that should be your ace boom coon. Like mm-hmm. that should be the one because at some point we knew at a young age Amen was the one. Yeah. Like Amen was, even if it wasn't his younger years, by the time we like get to that first six years later moment, like Amen is mm-hmm. the one. Like you want to do, and that's your brother. That's your brother. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, you, I want him on my side. I want him riding. Yeah. Um, and you can't really have that relationship when you bring your boys in the whorehouse and make fun of him in front of his, you know, all this piece of work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 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 So I don't know, man. Aegon's an idiot. That's all. Yeah. I, that's that's the moral of the story. He's he's an idiot. Um, but yeah, I don't know what he would have done except for die. That's Seriously. it. I just it occurred to me like there's nothing that there is no benefit he would have been, and maybe no that one. is why. Did they have a royal jester? Rhaenyra wouldn't do him like that. Out, <laughs> <laughs> like out. She wouldn't do it like that. She would. I believe Rhaenyra is Rhaenyra the just, <laughs> you know, Rhaenyra the benevolent. My girl would have found something for him to do, or at least just let him live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can you can have your room here, whatever. Well, well that's the perfect segue, Rachel, since you're talking about Rhaenyra. Mm-hmm. My girl Rhaenyra's is back. been missing in action. Everybody missing her. There's a council meeting going on with Team Black. Yeah. Queen Rhaenyra walks in. That's council second place. Let's take it from there. Yeah, uh, Jason and Bela are sick of her shit. This is the same council meeting that was going on earlier, but now she's made haste. Sorry, I got a lash in my eye. Uh, now she's made haste and she lets them know that she was in King's Landing. Bitch, where the hell you been? In King's Landing, trying to make peace, I'll, trying to see what the fuck is up. <laughs> I was upset. I was upset that she answered that. I was upset that she answered it because, first of all, Jace, watch your motherfucking tone, for one. Yes. Watch how you speak yes. to me, especially sure. in front of uh, others. Like, watch your tone. Um, but here's the thing. 100% yes. Who the fuck is you talking to? But Jace had to do it because, yes, we we know that Jace has matured, but we've got to understand that he's still a fucking kid. He's yeah. still inexperienced. And so, yes, I can your grace this and mother this, that, and the third. But because he's not like Lord Stark, uh, Creighton Stark, or even um, Blackwood, you ain't seen no shit yet. Yeah. You're still a kid. And so there is a level of, I don't want to say naivete, but childishness that slips out despite the severity of the situation because that's some kid shit where you been you got too much dip on your chip so i appreciated Renier being like uh, i'm gonna tell you where i was at i'm gonna tell all y'all like i needed to know and i don't think not i don't think i believe that she would have told them even if jace wouldn't have asked like look i know i've been gone this is it. At first, I was mourning. Okay, I told y'all what I wanted. Y'all done killed the fucking baby, okay? <laughs> so let me go see what I can figure out from here. I believe that she would have told them that. So, you know, she says, I was in King's Landing. I needed to know without a shadow of a doubt that there was no peaceful way forward. And now yeah. I know. And now I'm ready. And all Jace could say is, okay, we have to ready. Either I win my claim or I die. Or I die. She's ready to ride the fuck out. That's that's what it is right now. And they they, I love how she picked. Up, she knew something was going on because mm-hmm. they were telling they they were talking about like I said, Sir Cole collecting all these land, all these castles, and all that. And they say you know he's headed to Rook's Rest, and 
she immediately why Rick's rest? That, that doesn't make sense. It seems it's one of those things when you know something feels off, you need to investigate that more. Yeah. You need to investigate that more because hmm, they're making all the smart moves. They're setting up properly. Mm-hmm. Why would somebody who's been so strategic and so smart and so calculated make a move like that instead of going towards Hall? Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to sit on that. Maybe we should have a discussion about that. Does anyone else have any ideas? Obviously, everybody's thirsty for blood. Um, and, you know, they, and they had, and I, to their credit, I will say they had some good ideas because Lori Stallen, uh, who was on the council, you know, that's where that's where his house is. So maybe they know mm-hmm. since, you know, we get some council members, maybe we can get a little bit of things there or he's daring us. Um, and she says, there are those who have mistaken my caution for weakness. Let that be their undoing. And that's, that's for y'all. The dragon. Yep. That's for y'all. That's for mm-hmm. y'all. That's for us. That's for us as viewers. Yep. All y'all niggas is talking through the screen. Like, all right, <laughs> Jace, you keep talking about we need to send a dragon. Let's send a dragon. Now, Rachel, I'm not sure if you had the same thought as I did. I know a lot of people have had the thought. Chaz, even we, we mentioned Chaz a couple times. He sends me texts mm-hmm. about the show. He even said the same thing. I mentioned this in one of the episodes. I made a comparison to Godfather mm-hmm. when I talked about Tom Hagen, who was a consigliere for uh, Don Vito Corleone. Mm-hmm. Well, when it was Michael's turn to reign, or when it was Sonny's time, he mentioned, I need a wartime consigliere. Mm-hmm. That's what I need. I need somebody who knows what to, how to handle this war shit. Because anybody would have told her, hey, don't send just one dragon. Yeah. If we're going to do it, let's do it. Yeah. Let's send two or maybe even three just to be safe. Because we don't know what's out there. Sending one dragon was just a terrible, terrible decision. It didn't seem like it at the time. I get it. You think you're in the clear. And as viewers, we don't know the plan that Sir Chris and Cole had. We think it's in the clear, too. But damn it. we Damon okay. already told Ray Nice. Damon told Ray Nice when, when she was coming back. I don't know where she was coming from. Patrolling. She was in... Yes, she was entering. Damon was exiting, and he told her, "Like we're gonna need two dragons to take down Vagar. You gotta assume that Vagar gonna be out here, and they gotta assume we need two dragons to take this nigga out. If we take out Vagar, our odds of winning this thing go up exponentially." Yeah. Go ahead. You sound okay. like you got something to say. Okay. Couple things. One, I just want to make note that Lord Jacqueline, that is the the councilman or the white cloak, essentially, who took Rhaenyra to King's Landing. I want to make note that that was his father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a terrible way to find your father out of here, too. Yeah. And so now we talked about the council. My prayer is that he stays with Rhaenyra so my father did not die in vain. But on the flip side... I could see it also being not the turning point, but what makes me question my allegiance. Because, like, damn, bitch, you got my daddy killed. But that's the name of the game. You know, we got to be willing to die for this shit in the Game of Thrones and them dragons. Okay. I am not of the ilk of thinking that we necessarily needed to send two dragons. Okay. Because one, I'm more concerned as to how the fuck Vagar even got there and we just didn't hear this big bitch. Like, <laughs> I thought about knew. that too. Like, how does nigga and end up getting the, in the cut like that? Yeah, maybe the route that Eamon took to get to um, Rook's Rest. Maybe you don't have to pass Driftmark or, and Dragonstone. I don't know. But I know y'all been you between uh, Renice and Melis and Bela. Y'all been patrolling all of the skies. Like, I would assume that at some point, unless, again, under the cover of night, when everybody was asleep is when um, Eamon and Vagar got out there. But I did see, and I do believe this, had... Maylise, 
who is a war dragon, had she not have already been tired from fighting Sunfire, she could have got Vagar up out of here. Vagar is old and she got the same move. Yes, she is four times the size of Melise, but Melise was agile. She could stick and move. She, that same sneak attack that she did to uh, Luke and Cyrax, I think that's his dragon. It's the same thing she ended up essentially doing to Melise and Rhaenys. However, because Melise is older and bigger, she couldn't just snap her neck and body in the same way because the body grows, the older y'all get, this, that, and the third. Yes, two dragons would have been good, but who would have gone other than Rhaenyra? We're preparing. There is some sort of training, essentially, that Bela and Jace are going to have to do. We, I'm assuming that Lord Corliss has a dragon, but I think that his primary war form is some sea shit. This nigga's in the Navy. Right. <laughs> He's a naval captain. So yeah. I don't think he got a dragon. If Damon will bring his ass home, then that will be the only other war ready dragon other than Rhaenyra's dragon. So either me and you got to go, Rhaenys, Damon, who else would have gone? You going to send Bela? This her first mission. To me, Rhaenys ain't hit that Dracarys enough because if she would have hit Vagar with that Dracarys when they were head on, I think we see a different outcome. And I did see that the creator or George R. R. Martin did also say, even I already had this thought because um, I just saw it before we got started, that um, Maylise would have beaten Vagar had it been a one-on-one -on -one in this instance. Also, I just want the one-on-one. I just want the one-on-one. Um, Don't know why she's so nervous. Maylise and Vagar are besties. They live together. Shit crazy out here, man. Civil Vagar, War. Vagar was the dragon of Alyssa. Damon and Viserys, his mother. Before that, she was the uh, dragon of, I want to say. Um, it was Raina. She, I think Raina, not the Raina we know, but her namesake. I think, she, didn't she ride Vagar? Lena. Yeah, but I'm talking about before we. No, not Lena. No, that's what I'm saying. That there's a there's a Raina who Raina. Is oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. The conquerors. Rainice. I don't know why I said Rain. Rainice, excuse me. There's a Rainice that Rainice is named after. Her namesake. No, it's Raina. I believe. Was it Raina as well? I think it's Raina as well. Um, but long story short, they lived together. There was Balon, Vagar, and Melise, who were the conqueror and his two wives, dragons. And there's a third Balon is the conqueror's dragon, I think. But yeah, Melise and Vagar, long story short, grew up together. They rode dogs, Vagar is older, but they live together. And then remember, right, our Rainice, Auntie Cub, because was Lena's mother who rolled Vagar. Viserys and yeah. Damon grew up with Melise. And probably Vagar. Not Blood of sense. the dragon. These are our family members. Civil war. Not just a battle between kin, but a battle of dragons. Bruh. This shit is heartbreaking. This shit is heartbreaking. So. Yeah. So Queen, Queen of Asenia. Go ahead. Vicenia. Oh, that's it. Vicenia, which is mm -hmm. the grandmother mm -hmm. uh, of Viserys and Damon. Mm -hmm. Then their father, Balin, 
Mm-hmm. Um, Hero Vagar, and then mm-hmm. Lena, and then our Amen. Um, but yeah, Viser- who, v- to me, Alyssa. Um, who did Alyssa ride? Was it Melis? Um, let me see. I thought I had it pulled I up. It up. Let's see. Alyssa, yep, Melis and Rainis. Okay. No, so that's, good. that's it. Got that's it. it. Yeah, man. Um, that's a great point between it's not just about the kin, it's about the dragons as well. It's some sad shit. Mm-hmm. It's some really sad shit when you start thinking about it, especially awesome. when there's and not to mention what you mentioned, you said it about Corliss. We have to remember mm-hmm. Lord Corliss is not Targaryen. So he does not have his own. But he's dragon. Valerian. He has he's Valerian, but I don't believe he has the dragon blood or he I don't think he has a dragon. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. Once again, I don't know why I felt like. Yeah, I was gonna say I I don't know why I felt like Valerian since they understand high Valerian. Yeah, well, Valerian isn't necessarily the same as the because of the the Targaryen. That's the dragon blood. Right. Um. Let me see. I'm looking it up right now. And I don't think he has a dragon. I won't spend too much time on it, so we're good. We'll we'll figure this out more, so we'll talk about it next week. Um, a couple so of quick things before dragons, we get to weapons, the Valerians conquered surrounding lands and began their outward ex, uh, expansion. Although so only the that- were able to ride, uh, so there is they should have dragons as well. So how is this nigga like that, but he ain't got no dragon? Cause he looks he the sea nigga. Nigga, I'll take the sea and a dragon. What you talking about? Give me both of them. Yeah, that he don't need it. He probably, you know, like fuck it. Or um, or probably maybe not he specifically, somehow the Targaryens ended up with the dragons, but they really are. Valerian, you know what I'm saying? Like through the Conqueror, he took the eggs and this and the third. Maybe there was a shared thing back in the day, 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 and then the Conqueror was like, "Fuck it, we ball." I got this shit, and he had the big dog Vagar in them, so they had to succumb. They had to essentially bend the knee. We you keep your money, but you gonna bend the knee. Yeah, I guess we could be on to something. We'll have to figure that out. I don't know. That's a little bit odd. Uh, before we get to the actual battle to wrap things up, just want to mention, I don't know if you have anything to say about it, but obviously Queen Rhaenyra told Jace about the Song of Ice and Fire, uh, mm-hmm. which has been passed down from king to heir for as long as I know. I can't remember if she said a specific time. Uh, I didn't really have anything to add to this other than it was important to tell that to the air, because when we get to the Game of Thrones times, you can tell through translation that story had never been passed on. Like Daenerys never knew about that. She never yeah. knew about that fable and things like that. So I think mm-hmm. they did that or showed that just for that reason, just to kind of show the importance of, uh, I know we joke all the time about the Michael Irvin clip, you know, we losing recipes, just yeah. to make sure we don't lose yeah. these recipes. This is what's going on. This is the story. This is uh, the vision. That's been had Aegon the Conqueror the whole night. Um, mm-hmm. Did you have anything else to add to that? Uh, nope. Just shout out to Rhaenyra for passing that oral history down because, again, I wanted to make note of it. That's not going to be in the books that uh, Alicent was looking through. That's a story right. that Aegon told that was told to him by, which we learned was told to him by Jaehaerys, a conciliator, who I'm assuming was told by. Aegon or his father and then his forefather and his forefather because I'm not sure how long it, the difference between Aegon the Conqueror and uh, Jaehaerys is or was. That's right, it. Good to know. Good point. Yeah, good to know. And then we talked, you, you brought it up briefly. Aegon Saudi, he gets drunk. He's putting on mm-hmm. Aegon the Conqueror's Valerian steel armor. Mm-hmm. Right. 
which it was, I think it was fitting that that shit was too big for him. You a little nigga, yeah. Aegon. I always remember mm-hmm. that. You a little nigga. Uh, but he yeah. gets drunk, and anytime you get drunk and you make rash decisions, bad things usually happen. He gets on Sunfire. We know he's headed to battle, which takes mm-hmm. us to the battle of, of the series. The battle of the series so far. Seasons one so and two. It's I only battle. More- <laughs> Dragon battle so far. Yeah, other than other than Luke, which wasn't really a battle, it was more of an ambush um, mm-hmm. when Luke died. But yeah, we're at we're at uh, Rook's rest, and Sir Kristen and Gwen are having a back and forth. Yeah, once again, us as viewers and a lot of the trusted members, a lot of the trusted knights, aren't aware of this plan. It sounds like it's between Sir Kristen and Aemon. Um, Kristen's ready to move forward with battle. It's broad daylight. My nigga, you know what happened the last time we was in broad daylight. Dragon came That's down on us. I'm not trying to go through that again. Dragonstone is just across the bay. Yeah. So we got to anticipate that they'll be coming. So Chris said, fuck all that. We riding now. Yeah. And Cole pulls up to Rook's Rest. 1,500 deep. The battle's taking place. Mm-hmm. Bows and arrows are flying. Renise pulls up with Maylise. Rachel? Out to Rook's rest because they was low key fucking them up with them bows and arrows. Hey, them bows and arrows won the hope. It made me think. <laughs> it made me think like, damn, would I rather just like in fight. today's modern, yeah, fight or like would I just rather have somebody with the AK just come and take me <laughs> out of here? Bow and arrow just seems like a painful way to die. Yeah, like a unless it go through your heart or like something an instant kill was a slow painful death right right and i ain't i ain't trying to be part of none of that shit war in general just the idea of war and seeing people on the front line knowing that you ain't about to make it man shout out to them shout out to those who serve man because i i ain't i ain't about that life um especially for some bullshit cause for sure you stir for ass niggas nah fuck all y'all Oh, uh, but shit. Melisa's Melisa comes with uh excuse me, Rainice comes with Melise. Cole signals Vagar and Amen. Mm-hmm. about to Vayman about to make his way. Or Vagar, excuse me. Vagar about to make mm-hmm. his way. And then all of a sudden, Sunfire in the sky. You see Amen saying idiot and Valerian. And now you yep. have Sunfire and Melise getting to it. Dance of the dragons. Let's talk about it, Rachel. Yeah. Uh again. I didn't realize that some fire, I know that, or I'm, I'll assume that Aegon got her as an egg and hatched this, that, and the third. I need to look into the succession of how people get eggs and whatnot, how people get dragons and can claim eggs. But um, some fire is little compared to Maylise. Mm-hmm. Again. Very much so. Maylise. Is centuries old, dare I say. She's been to war before. Aegon was handling, he was sticking with Melis because he hit that Dracaris early. And this again, I said it, I don't think Rhaenys was utilizing that Dracaris enough. Uh, because I just would have burnt your little ass up off rip if I'm some fire, if I'm Rhaenys and Melis, like get your little ass out of here, gone. Uh, and you little dog, little, little cuz, the usurper, fuck you. Um, Amen and Vagar don't move just yet. You know, he puts her back down. We didn't know what the cutting of the, the woods and the trees was for when we saw the camp that Christian had. And now we know it was helping to disguise or to camouflage Amen and Vagar in the brush. So once Amen sees Rainis and Maylee sort of getting uh, Amen together. Now we see Vagar rising like the phoenix, rising in the sunset, this, that, and the third. And much to Aegon's chagrin, he thinks that his dear younger brother in the biggest dragon, which is four times the size of Maylee's, is coming to save him. Thank the gods. No, nigga. Dracaris on your head, too. 
Vagar a big motherfucker, man. Vagar a big ass nigga. He's four times. She's the biggest dragon, the biggest and the oldest dragon. Yeah. The next and one is Vermitor, Vermitor, whatever his name is, who we haven't even really met yet. Right. Yeah, she ain't no ho, man. Um, all right, and so let's talk about it. Let's talk about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Aegon, thank the gods. Yeah. What's Aemon's play here? Is Aemon thinking what we what we all think he's thinking as far as, you know what? I can take out the enemy and I can take the crown with one Dracarys. And I can make that. it look like, yeah. That, that, so we're on the same page. That's what Aemon's game plan was, right? Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. All right. Yeah, because I can make this look like some. Hey, I was trying to get Melis. Mm -hmm. A guy swooped in. Sunfire swooped in last minute. He got caught in the fire. That wasn't the yeah. plan, but you know, we at war. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's casualties of war all the time. Like I ain't mean for that yeah. to happen, but it is what it is. Matter of fact, no matter of fact, matter of fact, if I'm Amos, how the fuck did he leave King's Landing? Like, how did he even get out here? How'd y'all let this happen? He wasn't uh, supposed to be out here. The same way that Rhaenys and Maelys escaped King's Landing when they got up out of that uh, coronation. Ain't nobody well, paying no, attention well, to what's going on. <laughs> but that's my, no, if I'm aiming and somebody questions what happened or questions, you know, I'm a King Slayer, mm -hmm. put that Jamie Lannister moniker on me, like, I'm shooting back. Yeah. Like, hold on, like, this ain't, this nigga wasn't even supposed to be out there. Right. Like, How did y'all let him get drunk and let? Yeah. So I'm using that to my defense, but a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. um, but what really messed me up, Rachel, and something I can't stop thinking about. Mm -hmm. Why did Renice go back? <sighs> she wanted to finish the job, but I don't. Because she just should have went point, back. No, because she had gotten the best of Vagar at that point. Yeah, that's when you bounced. And Aemon obviously was stuck on Aegon. Like he, Aegon was already yeah. down at this point. Aemon was looking like, man, we, let's finish this job. Man, fuck this nigga. Yeah. You got jokes. This will be the last time you joke on me. And then he mm -hmm. looks and see, like he hears, he hears Maylise. But hold on, yeah. this nigga still here? That I, I don't know. That's gonna haunt me for a while. Why did you go back? Why did you turn around? Why but I guess it wouldn't be Rainice if she didn't. It wouldn't be Rainice if she didn't. Rainice, the queen who never was Rhaenyra's most loyal, not her child, conciliator, conciliator, who should have been named her hand, who I think would have been named her hand had she not have met her demise in this episode she just had to because she uh i think like her daughter when lena died she said i want to die a dragon rider's death renice is a bloodborne targaryen in the dragon rider if i'm going out I'm going to go out a dragon rider's death. And that's exactly what she did. She not had a, to do it for the culture. <laughs> about, I thought about Kobe Bryant, 2009 mm -hmm. press conference after being up 2 0 against the Orlando Magic in the finals. The infamous, Is it job the meme. Yeah, Yes, the, the infamous, the meme, like, you up 2 0. Why aren't you smiling? Like, what's there to be happy about? You up 2 0. Yeah. Job's not done. Is job done? I don't think so. Like that's pretty mm. much. I think what Renice, his that's what Renice's attitude was. Like job's not done. Like I came here to make sure that I had. I don't want to come back just reporting that there's a dragon. Nigga, we know they got dragons. Like, yeah. I want to come back reporting that I took one of these big motherfuckers out, if not both of them. Like mm. you said, Rachel, so beautifully. I'm a dragon rider. I'm a ball player. As, uh, <laughs> as Monica said in Love of Basketball. <laughs> yes, yeah, as, as Monica said in Love of Basketball, I'm a ball player. Like, I'm a dragon rider. That's what I do. Like, this is 
ain't no going back, ain't no running. Like the job's not done. Job's um, not done. And I vouch, I, I'm, I, I'm the one that stepped up. I know Rainier needs me the most. She counts yeah. on me the most. And I don't think we can undersell this. Rainier's had the utmost confidence. It's not like it was some cowardly yes. or not cowardly or some brave mission where you just know you you know you're gonna leave it all out there and it's it's just your last ride. Like, nah, I, I fully go out here expecting to go back to Dragonstone mm-hmm. with a victory. Mm-hmm. I didn't go into this thinking yes. this was gonna be my death. You see that from time to time, but now nah, Rainice had the confidence and, and rightfully so. So all of it put together, yeah, I can understand why she did it. Us as the viewers, the queen who never was. Yeah. Something about that shot of her, uh, Melisa's neck just being snapped. Yeah. The life being taken out of her, and then just that fall. Mm-hmm. And the way she lets the, she lets go and just kind of, that's how I want to go out. I know that these are dragons, and I there is some level of persona that happens, but they are again, we just talked about essentially the lineage of the writers. You didn't want to kill Lena. She be- she said you're curious about seven times before you actually killed her. You know good and goddamn this uh, Lena's mother. Yeah. This your best friend, Maylise. Damn it, Vagar. I- I'm really... I really fucked up about it. I'm not going to hold you. And before we just kind of round this episode out, I just want to give a quote from the book in honor of Renice's bravery and everything that she did. She really went out like a dragon rider. Princess Renice made no attempt to flee. With a glad cry and a crack of her whip, she turned Melise towards her foe. And it is what it is. She wasn't going to hold them up. And again, rest easy, my girl. The rest queen easy, who never my was. girl. The queen who never was. Incredible cinematography. There was something For about sure. that shot when you just see the dragons up in the air. For dance sure. of the dragons, as they say. Just the... The cat and mouse, us as viewers, thinking that Rainice was out of here. She's in the clear. She's looking around. They are too big to hide, but as she gets on the other yeah. side of the castle, he swoops up, and it's yeah. kind of like, damn. And it's one of those. That's all she got. Reminder. That's all she got. You mentioned that earlier. And it was just a good reminder that this story that we're in, that we're watching, that we're participating in, that we love so much. Mm-hmm. It's not a happy one, right? Right? Like you, you go yeah. into these wanting to, you know, you pick your side, you're rooting for that side, mm-hmm. but it's war, and not it's only war. is it war, not only is it war, Rachel, it's civil war, and those are the ugliest. We're still having effects of civil war today in in Come this on. America. Come on. Oh, um, after all of those years and. Somebody said the quote, like, nothing bloodier, nothing worse than a, a, a war between kin, nothing bloodier than a war between dragons. I probably butchered that quote, but you guys get the point. Um, it's just one of those reminders that uh, how much joy or how much excitement you get from the show is like, damn, this isn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't end with it. Um, and it's just, it's just, it sucks to see. And of all people, um, there's a lot of other characters I could have seen and swallowed the death a little bit easier. But something yeah. about Rainice. And now you look at Team Black, you have no Rainice. You look at Team Green, you have no Otto. Who are the who are the wise people in your council that are gonna be taking over? What's gonna happen? Is Lord Corliss going to turn the rest of the council against you, Renier, because he he blames you, even though you were in the room and could have excuse me, you could have stepped mm-hmm. up and said something. Yeah. Like, how does this look? I think maybe. I think he steps up, but it's also what further sours him for Rhaenyra. Not to mention, I was just going to say, go ahead, finish your thoughts. Not to mention, 
Not to mention Aegon, if you watch the previews for next week, you might imagine him to be dead, but he's not dead. We don't really know Hold his on. fate as of yet. I was gonna Go say, uh, I was gonna say before we wrap up, I did want to talk about that final scene with Kristen Cole and Amond where Eamon pulls his sword from its sheath. He's going to finish the job. You asked me earlier if Eamon, Aegon was trying to kill him. Oh, he surely was. He fully intended to kill him out on that, battle, uh, out on that battlefield. Had Kristen Cole not it came up, where's, where's your highness? Where's your grace, my lord king? He right here. Eamon didn't stay. He didn't stick around and make sure shit was sweet. He got the fuck on up out of there because my intention was to fucking Slay this nigga, slit this nigga's throat just yeah, in case. He's be cool. I hear yeah. some fire breathing. I don't know if you alive yet, but I'm gonna come kill you just in case. Yep, yeah, that sword drawn. If it weren't for yeah. something, and that's why I said earlier, right next to the left, because Amen wasn't thinking about it. once, once Sunfire mm -hmm. went down, he was yeah. going right to that spot in the forest and he was about to, mm -hmm. nigga, you out of here, king. Yep. And that's what it was gonna be. Um. I can't wait to see how this is going to play out because Eamon now, you would imagine, he's going to be in charge. I'm the captain now. Yeah. Kristen Cole knows. My nigga, you did that shit on purpose. Is he going to tell I anyone? Think, I don't think he knows. Only reason I say that is because you're the one that had to yell his name to put his sword back up. You was going to do some foul shit to that nigga. Rewatch that scene. He doesn't know fully what he's up against. What do you think? He, what do you think? He doesn't really know what happened in the sky. Yeah, you were watching, but you don't really know what was going on. Because to your point, I can use the tactic or I can say, when I hid your carrots, it was for Maylis and Rainey's. And here is Aegon and Sunfire. You know what I'm saying? You so far down, I, you don't really, 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 really know. I but how do you explain the sword? I think that he thinks that he's putting some fire out of her misery. Hmm. Go check on your king. Some fire is who you hear breathing, not Aemon, yeah. not yeah. Aegon. Yeah. He's far enough back, Kristen Cole, and Aemon is far enough back. He's not over top of Aegon. He said, oh, he's over there. I haven't even reached you. So I'm pulling my sword out preemptively. It would be different if he's standing over him, but he's not. So there's still some level of plausible deniability of what exactly happened. That's a great point. And you see him with that dagger. Once again, we mentioned it last week, the infamous legendary dagger. Mm -hmm. And opposite of Ray Neese and the Kobe quote, Amen bounces, like you said, Rachel, because the job is done. Yeah, this nigga laid the fuck out. Laugh at me again. Be the long, be the last time you laugh for a long time. So a you gotta time. imagine Amen goes back to King's Land and he's feeling himself. He's in charge. Who's gonna be able to tell him anything? Who knows? He gets to run this whole thing with Sir Chris and Cole as they've been doing, but without any kind of interference from King Aegon. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it looks like from the previews they're gonna twist this. To make yeah. it seem like Aegon was more of a champion than he actually was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, man. I don't know. There's a lot of after effect or a lot of... Uh, For sure. There's, there's, seeing, there's a lot coming next week. Seeing Maylisa's head on that cart did something to me. And if it, it did something blood. to me, I don't have no dragon blood. Again... Right. I talked about these people being essentially bonded by blood to these dragons. Clearly, you're ready to kill your sister and your nephew and this and the third. So blood don't mean shit to you. But these dragons are supposed to be honored and revered by y'all. And this is, I don't know if this is Cole's doing because you don't, you ain't no dragon rider. You don't have no Targaryen blood. It doesn't mean anything to you. Like it should mean had these tar had the black green Targaryens not be affected and plagued with that green. That's Viserys would never do that had a war turned. 
Targaryen against Targaryen. There's a level of this- honor and deference that I think is or was bestowed upon the dragons by their writers, by our humans. And this how you do? So if it sparked that in me, if I'm Rhaenyra, this is it. I'm pulling the Danny. I'm pulling the Daenerys. I'm pulling. I'm, I'm taking the dragon. I'm airing all this shit out. I don't give a fuck. I came to die. I came yeah. ready to die because all y'all gonna pay. Yeah. You know what that just reminded me of, real quick, before we get out of here, Rachel. Yeah. It reminded me of King's Landing in Game of Thrones, the Red Keep to be specific. Mm-hmm. Those dragon heads that they had. Mm-hmm. We were looking at Melisa one of those. Yeah. I wonder, I think Tyrion on one of the seasons mentioned there was 19 mm-hmm. and 19 of them or something. Like, I wonder how many dragon heads they actually had at the Red Keep. Because remember, we see one in Dragonstone, but I mm-hmm. wonder how custom it was to have one at the Red Keep at this time. If that was maybe the, the first one. I don't know. No, because you know, uh, Balon, his head was there in the keep already. His head is up there. Was it already there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a sad ass time for Team Black. For sure. sure. I'm ready for next week. Again, one of the best episodes of the season. Uh, No long rants like last week, but we still got a little over two hours. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean thoughts tap in like subscribe share yeah the episode yes. was the episode that was the episode said everything we 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 just added some commentary but next week That's i true. think i'm gonna be even more anxious for just because i have to see the after effect similar to Absolutely. episode two what happened after king jaharis's head or prince jaharis's head was cut off what's the after effect of that I'm expecting the same thing. We have four episodes left, and I expect all of them to go up. Yeah. All it's of up. them to go up. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's up. It's already up. So, yeah, you're absolutely mm-hmm. right, Rachel. Um, interesting power dynamic. Big players are lost. Let's see how this goes moving forward. As always, it's a pleasure speaking to you always. about always. about this. I, I love you. I love you. Your grace. Um, <laughs> RIP to... Oh, and shout out to uh, um, Eva Best. Is it Eve Best? It might be. Is it Eva or Eve? Let me see. I think it's Eve Best. I think it's um, Eve. Eve Best. Yes. Eve Best, who plays Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Mm-hmm. Incredible job. An incredible job. The, the queen who never was. The one we didn't deserve. Job well done. Yes. Um, also, real quick. Real, mm-hmm. real quick. Real quick. Mm hmm. We keep getting these young Rhaenyra flashbacks. Yeah. Are we gonna, get a, are we gonna get a King? Are we gonna get a King Viserys flashback? Oh yeah, I think so. As long as Damon you isn't here and all, I think that we get words from Lena. I think we see Lena again, and I think we get a Viserys for sure. Okay. I'm ready for Damon to get him sure. like back to the back to the shits. He's been away from yeah. the main cast long enough. Let's get Damon back to the shits. Uh, but yeah, all of that, that's enough. We, we said enough. Rachel, I love you. Everyone out there listening, you. we appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in, for giving your feedback and comments. Please remember to just hit us up if you want to be, if you want to join the conversation. Like I said, we'll mention you on the episode and, and add you to the convo. We are excited about next week's episode, episode five of season two. Rachel, that's about it. We will see y'all next week. That's it. I bid y'all niggas adieu. Peace. (laughs) (laughs) Peace.